Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2019 battle series. I hope you all well, had a great weekend and we're back here again today kicking off with a brand new team as you can see on the screen in front of you. Just before we get into anything a massive shout out to each and every one of you that commented and made suggestions for restricted combinations that I asked for about two weeks ago to play right here today on the channel. Um, the common consensus that came back was the Dialga and the Kyoga so that's what we went with today. Hope you enjoy the team as we play through the next two weeks. We will be making a few changes I'm pretty sure like we did with the Kieran White team and I thought the flow of that was quite nice. There was a lot of benefits I think as well from doing those sort of things. It would probably help out quite a lot of you players, newer players as well as you're building in this format. Just looking at how to test and overcome some of those big threatening matchups that you're maybe struggling with in your team building process. But onto today's team, as always it is linked down in the description as well as the raw pace for you guys to check out and take away and have a play with if you would like to. If you do, make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think of the team. But as I say, this is the starting process of the team. We'll probably change things up as we go through the next couple of weeks, but we are kicking off with Dialga. It is going to be a trick room setter. It has got Thunder and Earth Power. I did one flash cannon on there, but we really couldn't make room for it. We've got the Kyogre there. We've got Calm Mind on the Kyogre for this starting squad, so it's going to be a lot of fun to play around with and become very threatening very quickly. Got Incineroar there, doing what Incineroar normally does, fake out support, intimidate support, and it also gives us that really nice option against Lunala that otherwise would be a bit more difficult to deal with. We've got Zerkatry there, it's going to be a bit of an odd pick, maybe a little bit of a forgotten Pokemon in this format, but I think under Trick Room it can do a lot of work, so hopefully that kind of pays off this week. We've got the Bronzong as well, it's going to be another alternative Trick Room setter and another check against Xerneas in particular alongside that Amoongus that has got the Rage Powder support, the Spore support and works extremely well under Trick Room, protects the Alga from those fighting type attacks and other threatening attacks that it is prone to be knocked out by but on a whole I'm excited to play this team it's the first time we've had Dialga I think on the channel in the the Sun and the Moon series so I'm going to be quite exciting to play this and um, we've also moved the camera from down in this corner up to this corner because that was a suggestion from Nick as he said he couldn't read the text so we'll try this out for this week if it doesn't work out we'll move it back down but let me know what you guys think because the aesthetics of the videos are very important to me and what is best for you is what I'm gonna do going forward right let's get into today's episode guys gonna be really exciting let's get some music on and um, without further ado let's get into it hopefully you find our first opponent very quickly as always if you enjoy the content make sure to leave a like on the video make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss any of these daily episodes that we have coming out our guide series and also our other content Pokemon stuff as well. All that sort of stuff, yeah. So you know, that's it. What tune are we gonna pick? Let's go Jotaro Legend. And we've got our first opponent. So, without further ado, we'll get into Team Brilliant. So, our first opponent of the day is playing a team of Groudon, Xerneas, Talonflame, Incineroar, Cartana, and Amoongus. So, one of the things we have to watch out for straight away if we go down this Trick Room route is that Amoongus. It is going to be able to really disrupt the majority of things on our side of the field. We haven't got a Tapu to kind of compensate for those spores and, and things like that, but we do have safety goggles on our Bronzong that can help and do a lot of work. Um, the Trick Room is going to be our best option because the majority of this team is very fast and you look at the, the speed control options on here, it's just Talonflame, maybe that um, Cartana with Tailwind, so presuming that it's going to be more of a fast variant than a slow variant with maybe the Groudon being the slower of the two restricteds there alongside that Xerneas. Xerneas Incineroar is a lead that we'll have to be careful of. We've seen quite frequently on the last two weeks on the channel that that lead, if you lead in wrong against it, then it can become very disruptive. We want to bring the Kyogre for sure because of the Groudon Sun, so we want to try and win that Weather War if we can. And I think what we'll do is lead off with Incineroar, uh, lead off with Bronzong, I'm gonna bring, I don't know if I wanna bring Dialga to this match. Although Dialga can be very good. Um, I definitely wanna bring Kyogre and maybe Amoongus here is gonna be our last pick. Um, yeah, let's do that, let's do that. So good luck to my opponent and uh, hopefully this one's a good one to kick us off today. I don't know if I'm convinced about the the the, uh, the cam up in this corner. If it's just me, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get used to. But 
we'll see we'll see how it goes but i would appreciate any feedback on the the, uh, the camera change in this episode in particular We've got our first opponent first leading out with Amoongus and Groudon, so that's not too bad. Um, we can guarantee the Trick Room, and we can guarantee going for... Well, we could just go for a Flare Blitz, to be honest, into the Amoongus, if we wanted to. Um, I think what we'll do is we will... I'm going to Flare Blitz the Amoongus, and I'm going to... I'm going to Trick Room as well. Because if we lose Incineroar here, like, I really don't mind. But if we can get rid of this Amoongus early on, then it makes... Like, the risk here to get rid of this Pokemon is so good for us. Precipice Blades. We avoid. Incineroar avoids! Ha! Oh, and in the sun. Okay, the Ocker Berry. That makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, I wonder if they spore into uh, the Bronzong slot. Be funny if they do. Ah, oh, there's the safety goggles working out so well already. So we are able to get the trick room up. Um, Incineroar is in a little bit of a spot now, for sure. Um, but we can definitely. I mean, one thing we could potentially do is I feel like the Groudon. No, I like I don't. Uh, one of the things. I, yeah, what I'm gonna do is bring in Amoongus for. Incineroar, keep it for later, and I'm just going to gyro ball into this Groudon. It could fire punch us for sure, but Amoongus switching out, Incineroar coming in, that makes a lot of sense. But just having the Incineroar in the back to bring in again, and then having Amoongus out on the field as well, we can start sporing things, which is really nice. Imagine the Groudon will go for a fire punch here. The thing is, I could have U turned as well with. Incineroar, but I kind of really don't want to do that. But just going for a Precipice Blades, which is fine. Fine, fine, fine. But the one problem we've got here is I'm not really taking advantage of our Trick Room turns as well as I would like to be doing. Um, okay, so I think... Because I want to try and I need to get Kyogre out onto the field. That's the big thing. Uh, I'm going to bring Incineroar back in. And I'm going to... I'm going to ally switch here. Because, yeah, if I reveal it now, that puts doubt in my opponent's head. And I don't want Bronzong to get knocked off. And I feel like that's what you would do maybe with the Incineroar if you don't go the fake out route here. And, like, preferably for ourselves... It would be great if Incineroar goes down here to a Precipice Blades. I don't think it will from a minus two from this range. Um, but maybe a knockoff. Oh, the Groudon switching out. Okay. Cartana hitting the field. Which again, I don't really mind too much. There's a fake out. Okay. <laughs> Ally switch. <laughs> Not really helping us too much. I could skill swap the opposing Incineroar, which might be quite fun. Um, but the Cartana's got to feel super threatened right now. So, yeah. There's a part of me that wants a U-turn out on the opposing Incineroar, and I think that's not a bad idea. Um, and just Gyro Ball. Hmm. We know the Xerneas hasn't been brought, so that's kind of fine. It's just making use of our Trick Room turns. I think what I'll do is switch in Amoongus, and I'm going to U-turn out on the opposing Incineroar, and try and get a Kyogre in for at least one turn. Because as long as that Groudon's out on the field for my opponent, like we know we've got a decent switch into Precipice Blades with anything that on our side of the field. Um, okay, the Groudon coming in. This is perfect for us, because we can get Kyogre in now as a Flare Blitz. It's going to be into Amoongus. We should take this though. Yeah. And our Berry. Tasty Berry. Okay, that's brilliant. And now we get we can get Kyogre in. Do some nice damage with a critical hit there. Okay. But the problem is our Trick Room's running out so quickly right now. 
So it's going to mean getting the Moongas back out. But that regenerator ability coming in super handy. Um, and get the trick room set up once again. The Groudon's feeling so pressured right now. It's got to switch out. I'm going to bring in uh, Bronzong once again. And we will just go for a Water Spout. But both things out in the field right now feeling super pressured. So you've got to imagine the Moongas probably comes in for my opponent. And probably the Cartana as well. And depending on the Cortana, it could have a salt vest. There's the Incineroar switching out, and the Groudon definitely switches out. So we're going to see both grass types come onto the field, which then opens the door for our Incineroar to come back in. Okay, so Groudon going to actually protect here. Yeah, we are going to get a free water spout into this Amoongus. Okay. Dimension is back to normal, which is fine. Um. We could Waterium Z the Amoongus this next turn, just to make sure that we do get the, the knockout there in Trick Room. I think that's quite a nice option for us to do, because I still feel like the Groudon probably switches out here. And can we just make sure that this Groudon... No, this Groudon's neutral. The problem is if the Groudon has the, um, the Groundium, that could be a big problem for us. So we could potentially, basing on this, Go ally switch and then go for the Waterium into the Amoongus. Because the Waterium from this range will definitely get that Amoongus. It's just I worry a lot more about the Tectonic Rage into the Kyogre slot, which we're seeing right now. Because the one thing is we probably take it because of how defensively bulky we are, but at the same time. We don't want to be left with no no health at all. That's the one thing we don't want to be left with because we can't really utilize Kyogre very well if we're doing that going into the latter stages of this game. Um, but now with the Amoongus out of the way, it really opens up the door for our Trick Room kind of mode to really, really do a lot of things. And there's the Amoongus gone. An ally switch. <laughs> it's such a funny move. It's such a funny move. But at least we get around the, the Z move. Um, right, I can totally bring in Incineroar now. And I think what we'll do is just go Trick Room. Yeah. The Groudon probably switches out for Incineroar. If I'm like completely... Like if you think about it, the Groudon, you want to try and keep it in the back to make as much use of it later on with its weather as you can so taking out now would make a lot of sense it doesn't look like my opponent's going to do that though uh, there's the leaf blade it's going to be in 2 and see and a uh, precipice blades will will pick up the knockout onto incineral which kind of works out all right for us really yeah because now we get the trick room up we get the free switch into Kyogre and as long as our rain doesn't end, then we're we're sitting pretty pretty happy. Yeah, the rain has not gone away just yet. Which is good. Um now we get the Groudon. The Groudon probably switches out for Incineroar. You could imagine. Uh alright. How many turns of rain have we got? One. Oh, you might protect here. Uh we'll go water spout and we'll go uh do we Jarrowball or Ally Switch here? Um, hmm. I'm just going to Jarrowball because I feel like the Cartana is not a Salt Vest, but it could well be, you know. God, I'm going to switch out. That's fine. I mean, this is this is like this is totally fine. But we're relying on Kyogre to take down this Cartana, which isn't always the best thing to rely on in these sort of situations. Cartana's not going to protect. Likely is that Assault Vest variant then. Um, so it probably takes this Water Spout, and we'll probably see a Leaf Blade. Yeah, 100%. 100%. But the next turn we can just Scald that slot. There's a Leaf Blade. We should, oh! There we go. That's the magic of... Um, that's the magic of Ally Switch. It does critical hit. But yeah, next turn now we just skill swap water spout. 
and uh, we've 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 won this one, I think. So that's a good start for us today. A really good start for us, um, kicking off with a win. Um, hopefully we can continue this on. But this this mode of the team feels pretty nice. Um, and this is against quite a popular kind of core as well with the, the Xerneas the Groudon. There's something that you will run into quite a lot and uh, there's the magic of the skill swap. And this move is going to become way more useful in the Ultra series with the, the Primal Weathers that we're going to see. So keep it in mind for you newer players coming into the format. So there we go. Skill swap, rain up, overwrite the sun, and water spout for the win. So good game to my opponent, and uh, a nice little victory for us to kick off with today and show that the team can uh, can really do some work. So, that's exciting, isn't it? Right, we'll move on to our next game. Hmm. Bronze zone, if like, your opponent hasn't really got ways to deal with it, then it, it is a pain to, to deal with. Um, we just saw the Groudon throwing out. I didn't even want to entertain the idea to go for the fire punches. Um, the one thing that I do think it, we do miss a little bit on this team is maybe um, some sort of recovery heal pulse. We've got berries everywhere. Berries coming out of our ears, but Bronzong with the safety goggles is so nice. It's something that I've really liked um, since Amoongus has been such a problem uh, in this format forever and um, but the safety goggles as we saw there does a really nice job in these sort of situations and um, but it's the the recovery that you do miss on bronzong so maybe something with heal pulse could be quite nice in there we've got our next opponent from japan 16 or 5 rated player and we'll move straight into team preview and they are running a team of kyoga scissor incineral eveltal tapakoko and amungus so hmm Things become a little more tricky for us here, especially if we wanted to bring the bronze on. Um, and maybe this is one where Dialga kind of shines a lot more um, in this match, just because of the Kyogre. Um, and it can do so much work, especially if that electric terrain's up, as we do have um, Thunder as well. It can do some decent stuff against what my opponent's got. Again, we'll probably want to end up with a Trick Room to support our Kyogre. Um, it looks like the, the best method of speed control on my opponent's side of the field is going to be Tailwind potentially on the Eveltal or Scissor. There's no Trick Room options here. But maybe this one's a really good one. If I'm like completely honest, for Zerkatry, um, it feels like Zerkatry could do so much work in this match. Got to be a little bit careful still of that Amoongus, for sure. Um, but we do have our own Incineroar that we can bring to kind of alleviate that slightly. But it's what we want to lead with. I think I'll go with Dialga. And... Hmm. Do I go with Zerkatry to lead? Yeah, let's go with Dialga Zerkatry. There's no ground on my opponent's side of the field, so that's fine. Um, we'll bring Incineroar on the back and Kyogre as well. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to bring Amoongus, for sure. Um, but... We ain't got room for five Pokemon, unfortunately. I wish we had. Because Amoongus, you would be right here. Right alongside us in this one. And there's probably a part of me that's pushing to bring Zerkatry a lot more than we probably should. But it feels like it could do really well. Especially if the electric terrain is brought by my opponent. Um, it makes a lot of sense for them to bring the, the Coco uh, against like the Kyogre and stuff. And we are... Whoop, got that electric terrain. Looking looking good. Sitting pretty. Um, and the Incineral and the Tapu Koko coming out now for my opponent. So there's the electric terrain. Firing onto the field. And it makes it so much easier for us because now if that Amoongus comes in, it can't stop putting things to sleep, which is ideal. Right, I'm just going to trick room in. Tail Glow here, we're going to get one of them off. And uh, if we can't get the other one off, we can do it again the next turn. I don't think there's much worry about us being knocked out with either thing on our side of the field from either a target. So that's fine. I'm going to see a fake out from the Incineroar into Zerkatry to stop that. A taunt, but my opponent taking every option to shut every method that we've got to set up down. So, <laughs> fair play to them. Fair play. Uh, what we'll do is Earth Power the Coco. Um, and. Do we go Tail Glow again? Or do we switch in Incineroar? I feel like you probably. Hmm. We need to get the Alga out of here so we can get the Trick Room up. I'm going to switch in Incineroar and I'm going to go for the, the Tail Glow. 
Although it's a little bit risky because without the trick room up, it will maybe better just getting damage onto stuff. Um, and I feel like the Coco at this point probably switches out. So I'm going to just Thunderbolt into that slot, get some damage on something coming in there. That's what I'm banking on, but we're not going to see it. We maybe do, we maybe see a Vault switch out onto the Dialga. Now that would be the best situation if we see the Vault switch out and then the Kyogre or the Velt will come in. And that's what I'm kind of thinking my opponent's probably. Wow, okay. It's not. It's going for the Gigavolt Havoc. I really don't understand this. But, I mean, they're probably predicting that the Dialga switches out, so trying to catch something like Kyogre in. But, I mean, I'm not bringing Kyogre onto the field in front of a Tapu Koko. It's into the Zergatry. He wants to just get rid of that. Okay, this should just proc a berry. Which it does. Incineroar U-turning. Okay. So my opponent doing all the right things, not making it easy for us to kind of get set up or anything like that. I didn't expect Taunt on Coco, but it is it is very useful. If we'd only Thunderbolted the Incineroar slot, like a normal person. Hmm. Eveltar coming out. And I mean, look at that, it's not even boosted, and we do like 50% to Coco, which is crazy. Um, we will U-turn out on Coco. Um, I mean, we could predict that the Yveltals... I just don't want to allow the Kyogre to come in with without Dialga on the field, and that's what I'm kind of worried about. So I'm just going to Thunderbolt the Yveltal and U-turn out on Coco. Okay, Coco going to protect here. We're going to see a Tailwind from Yveltal. Oh, just a protect, protect. Hmm. Probably predicting the protect from ourselves, to be honest. And there's also the fake out support, but we know that Yveltal isn't uh, Soulfest. So that's quite nice information. Um, I'm still going to U-turn, and I think I'm going to do exactly the same. Uh, although, we probably are at risk to get taken down with Zerkatry. Like a knockoff, and something else can probably take us out here. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's just protect Zerkatry here, and U-turn with Incineroar. Try and maneuver a uh, Dialga back onto the field. Is a thunderbolt. What's into Incineroar? And there's a knockoff. Right, I think what we're gonna do is get Dialga back onto the field. We're gonna bait that taunt from the Coco. Um, I feel like my opponent has to go for the taunt there. Um, because otherwise we get a trick room up and it makes it extremely difficult for my opponent to kind of operate with that trick room up. So I'm going to switch straight back into Incineroar and I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt this time into Eveltal. And plus at the same time we're going to get an Intimidate onto the Eveltal which is super important to allow our Zerkatry to potentially survive and allow us to get a Thunderbolt off into that one, Pokemon. And that's like one restricted down which makes it a lot easier for us going forward. So there's a taunt that we've baited out as a knockoff. Perfect. Yeah. And because of that intimidate, that allows us to survive. So we get this off. This should knock it out. Yeah, 100%. Zirkutri actually doing some work here. Um, it has been difficult because of, obviously, um, the taunt on the Coco and showing its utility here in this match, especially. But I mean, we got rid of that. And Coco is kind of on its last legs now. The electric terrain gone. <clears throat> we have got a beast boost, which is pretty nice. Kyogre coming in. I wonder if it's scarfed. Could it be scarfed? Because we could fake out. We could totally, we could totally find out if it is scarfed or not. Um, because the Coco definitely attacks into Zerkatry here. It has to. Like it really. It has to. It has to. Um. Hmm. 
but we need to get rid of the core core before we can really get the trick room up and we're not going to be able to do that I don't think with Incineroar out in the field it is probably Scarf Kyogre Coco going for a Vault Switch, where's it into? it is into the Zerker Tree, yeah okay but now with the Coco off the field we can get the Alga back on the field and uh, try and set a trick room up Incineroar coming out Okay. Things are all not lost just yet. Hmm. Probably just going to see a water spout come out. But I wonder if my opponent wants to get the Coco out onto the field fake out Dialga. That's the thing. I'm going to switch in Kyogre for Incineroar and I'm just going to protect here. I think the worst case scenario for us could be if the Incineroar does fake our Dialga out and we see the Coco come in for the Kyogre. But my opponent might be just greedy and want to just get some damage off because the next turn we definitely 100% are able to get a Trick Room up. There's a the fake out. And there's a water spout. Yeah, and Kyogre are able to take that pretty easily. And now we can just do the trick room stuff. Um, let's protect in trick room. You need the Coco out really to prevent this turn. Because there's no way that Incineral Kyogre take out our Dialga now. another water spout okay see how tanky this Dialga is Oof. yeah and there's a knockoff oh it's into Kyogre right wow I thought you would go for the Dialga there to be honest like if I'm completely honest I would think the like the Dialga is definitely the slot that you want to go for Um, now we can just water spout and thunder the rain's up, so thunder's 100%. We've got no risk of missing. Water spout should... Mm, I don't know if it'll be enough to get the, the incineral. I'll put it in very close range, though. And we still got a Z-move. And then Kolkor to deal with once it comes back in. <coughs> so, okay. Even better, the electric terrain setting up for us. Especially if, if this means that we take out um, the incineral here. Okay. Hmm. Incineral slower than a, a Kyogre. That surprised me a little bit. And Kyogre coming back onto the field. Such a shame that it was into the, the wrong slot. Hmm. the water spout but I mean I don't know which target you kind of fake out here with with incineral because I I think what I'm gonna just do is go for hmm the problem is I guess is if we I, I have to I'm gonna protect Kyogre and I'm just gonna thunder the opposing Kyogre, because the next turn we can Waterium Z the Incineroar and then Thunder the Kyogre. It's just I'm worried about a fake out Thunder into our Kyogre from theirs, um, which could be a little bit problematic. And maybe our Dialga Thunder doesn't get their Kyogre, depending on how it's built, of course. There's a fake out. We get it wrong, but I mean, that's fine still. We're not in terrible danger here. We've still got Trick Room turns to go. The skull doubling up. Oh, my opponent making a really nice read there. So fair play to my opponent in that situation. The rain does stop. Makes it a bit awkward for us to get these thunders off now. Um, but we should be able to still get the water RMZ into Incineroar. And that will be more than enough to pick that up. Don't need to worry about that too much. And I think... Do I go for a blind thunder? I think I go for a blind thunder into the Kyogre. 
as a knockoff. Okay, it's into our Kyogre. That's fine. Now we get the Waterium Z. <coughs> I should take down the Incineroar. We should have no trouble taking down the Kyogre now. I wouldn't have thought. It's locked into Scald. We only need one of our Thunders to hit. Like, if it Scalds into Dialga here, then... It procs our berry. Because Incineroar decided not to knock it off. But we don't need it, because Thunder strikes. And that will be more than enough to pick up the knockout and give us another win in our first episode with this brand new team. So, excellent start for us today. Hopefully we can continue this as we go on. The team feels really solid. I think it'll be interesting to come up against um, a really solid Groudon build because there can be issues there, I think. Um, but that's that's debatable. I think it's how we play it. Um, but to start us off, uh, we couldn't ask for anything better today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode, guys. Leave your comments in the comment section below. I love reading them and uh, love getting back to you as soon as I've got a little bit of time to do that. But before we leave, just to remind you, as always, Flinch Clothing has launched. Flinch.clothing.com. If you want to win some goodies, we have a prize draw going on till the 1st of March. To enter, all you need to do is hop over to www.flinchclothing.com, scroll down the homepage, find the Join the Flinch Squad, which is our mailing list, sign up, you will be entered into a big prize draw for all of these goodies on your screen right in front of you now. So good luck to all of you that are doing that. I hope you have the best of luck. Um, I hope you have a great day as well. We're going to end things up there, guys, and we'll be back with more Kyoga Dialga tomorrow. So until then, guys, take care of yourselves. Have a great day, afternoon, morning, whatever time of day it is, and I'll see you then. So until then, bye-bye.